Hey, good morning. It's Patricia Murphy. It's Friday. This is Seattle now. This week, we learned Ichiro will be the latest Mariner to join the team's Hall of Fame. The cost of a Thanksgiving dinner is going up, and apparently Dick's Burgers are not for everyone. We'll see if they got a fair shake there. KUOW's Paige Browning and game designer Kat Kruger are here to wade through the week right after these headlines. It's budget season, and the question of police funding is still a hotly debated one at the city council. Last night, the council voted 5-4 to four to reject cutting 101 unfilled positions from SPD's payroll, but also shut down attempts to redirect other city funds toward SPD. Chief Diaz called a potential staffing cut devastating and demoralizing in a statement before the vote. Council President Lorena Gonzalez said calling it a cut doesn't quite add up since the jobs are currently vacant. There's a development in that redistricting story we told you about yesterday. If you missed it earlier this week, the bipartisan commission in charge of drawing the state's new voting maps missed a deadline to get it done. And now it's the state Supreme Court's job, starting with trying to figure out exactly what went wrong. The court issued an order to the commission chair yesterday, giving her until noon on Monday to explain what was going on behind the scenes as the deadline came and went. The justices want to see a sworn declaration breaking down when the votes happened, what they were about, and anything else they were up to at the time. And she's Seattle's most famous librarian and action figure, and now a National Book Award winner. Longtime KUOW and NPR Books commentator Nancy Pearl picked up the honor on Wednesday night. Pearl was given the National Book Foundation's Literarian Award for her lifetime achievements toward getting more people interested in books and reading. That puts her in the company of past winners Maya Angelou and Terry Gross. Congratulations, Nancy. It's Friday again. Western Washington is mopping up and Ichiro Suzuki is headed for the Mariners Hall of Fame. Kat Kruger is here today. She's a game designer and dungeon master of the D&D podcast D20 Dames. Hey, Kat, welcome to the show. Nice to be here. I'm looking forward to chatting. You an M's fan? Uh, yeah, well, long, complicated story, but I grew up in Toronto, so... Uh-oh. That's it. We'll just, we'll <laughs> leave it right there, Kat. I think you've said enough. I remember when Ichiro was big, and everyone would come into the newsroom to watch the games, and this was when I was hosting All Things Considered, and this was the time of day when I had to get ready for the show, and it was always a huge distraction that made me somewhat crabby, but... Those days are over now. <laughs> Paige Browning is here as well, KUOW newscaster and journalist. Paige, Ichiro is so beloved. Are you a fan? Oh, are you kidding me, Trish? Hello, by the way. <laughs> when I saw the news about Ichiro, the first thing that I remembered was I used to be a summer camp counselor, and we loved him. He was so beloved during his, you know, his heyday. We inserted a lyric into a summer camp song just about him, which I'm not going to sing, but yes, suffice to say, I'm a fan. That's Wait a awesome. minute. Why won't you sing this? Uh, m- maybe at the end. We'll see. <laughs> I'm coming back to you about that. I'm coming back to that page for real. That was a really fun story this week. But in over the top real estate news this week, a Boeing 747 is going to land in South Lake Union. It's part of a new luxury development. Have either of you seen the rendering for this? It is basically going to hang over the space and connect the two buildings in the development. Claire, our producer, said it's like the hot dog between two buns, which I thought was a pretty (laughs) funny analogy. Paige, right now it is broken into, this plane is broken into 39 pieces, no wings. So the assembly might be fun to watch. Yeah, I would say. I mean, Trish, this is a story that, I, I simultaneously have so many thoughts about it and also don't know what to think. Because one thing that's really cool, once it's all put together, all 39 pieces, is it is a sweet nod to Seattle's past. We used to be sort of a company town. So that's cool. It's like a public sculpture in some ways, which I'm very pro public sculptures. I know that was exactly my thought. It was like, okay, Paris has the Louvre. Uh, yeah. 
you know, but like, I don't know. There's like so much, like so much to deconstruct in this, this fuselage. I thought when I saw this, it's just getting hard to justify the cost of real estate in this town. And they just had to throw in an airliner Honestly. To, to, you know, up the ante a little bit because around this is going to be 47 stories of luxury apartments mm-hmm. and Seriously, luxury. The comps in the neighborhood are small studios for about 2500 So you're going to pay. Yeah. One of the places I first read about this was in a news outlet basically for luxury travel. Um, oh. I, but I don't know. It's something about this is is interesting to me in the sense that, okay, Fubok Soup Shop, it used to be in an old ship in Seattle. There's the Orient Express restaurant and an old train. I find those kind of cool, but you can go in those. Mm-hmm. You won't be able to mm-hmm. go in this if you're just, you know, a normal a normal peasant, a normal member of the public <laughs> like me. Um, this is not a nod to the business class page, but in some ways it is because it's going to be office space. Yeah, for the development company. I actually think could be a really sweet office, but... They're going to have to put in some serious lighting because they'll be below two skyscrapers inside a plane that's just barely hovering above the ground. <laughs> yeah, I feel like they they could have deconstructed the plane a little bit more and like had a nod to the plane history in this in the city rather than the obvious here is a ginormous plane that we're just going to stick right in the middle of all these two towers. I thought yeah. it would, I think it would have been cool to like maybe have the cockpit somewhere as like I don't know oh. the foyer. I love yep. that idea. And at, at risk of dragging this on too long, the one <laughs> one cool thing I thought about this was what else were they going to do with this humongous plane, this jumbo jet? Put it in a landfill somewhere, let it, you know, go to waste in a field somewhere. So maybe there's a cool reuse story mm-hmm. out of this. Yeah. All right, we're moving on. Thanksgiving is less than a week away now, but a lot of people are skipping forward to Christmas shopping already because anything that has to be shipped is likely going to need some extra time. I've been trying to buy a vacuum for more than a month now. I am on my third try, ladies. Two just disappeared during the shipping process. One may never have existed at all. Some of this, of course, is my own making because I wanted to get a good deal. I'm a little cheap. But at this point, I it's starting to feel a little silly. Kat, you're a freelance game designer. I am curious if this supply chain issue is impacting your work. Oh, absolutely. Like games and books, there are a lot of delays going on. And books and games are selling out before you can you can get them. So I think people are probably waiting for the Black Friday deals. But you might actually want to get ahead of that because there's going to be some challenges for Christmas shopping this year. I'm even reading uh, in my mail that there will be delays with the Postal Service starting in a couple of weeks that you should expect that's going to take longer for you to send out anything, bills, holiday cards, whatever you're trying Mm. to do. Paige, what is your relationship with shipping? Your family's local. Well, yeah, family in Spokane, Seattle area. My sister's in Colorado, Mm. which is, and, and she's far in the mountains where it's, it, it can take a long time to get things to her, but I will tell you how I've been impacted by the delays. I'm a sort of a closet motorcycle rider, and the bike was at the shop for probably six weeks just to get a lock set, the thing you put your key in, because wow. they said Suzuki just doesn't have any anywhere in the country and eventually came and the the shop mechanic said we finally got it from suzuki with an amazon tag on it so they just went on amazon to rebuy their stuff to get to the seattle you know scooter repair store so wild it's it's a lot of those little tiny parts that are really hard to get right now yeah 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 for my part like i i know that some of my projects have i've been waiting on announcements and they've been delayed so um you know and and Clearly, if you have a game coming out, you want it out before Christmas so people can buy it. But it's just Mm. not happening. Wow. Wow. Hanukkah is super early this year, too. Yeah. And I have seen it a couple of times now. People saying, let's just not buy anything this year. Let's just take the pressure off, take the year off. Mm -hmm. And everything is really expensive right now. If you are shopping for things like clothes or Thanksgiving dinner, the prices in the Seattle area are going way up 
Gene Balk at the Seattle Times did the math on this. This is interesting. Boys blue jeans. One of the <laughs> things that got a lot more expensive, 45% pricier than this time last wow. year. Kat, you have a son, so I'm, I'm sure you've noticed. Oh, Yeah, but thankfully, he's so slender that I actually get girls jeans for him. <laughs> Brilliant. A little hack. A hack. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I... I, I have definitely noticed like the the prices for kids' clothing. Um, I didn't realize it was boys' jeans specifically, mostly because I shop girls' jeans. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and one of the one of the big things around here that has been ticking up is recreational and outdoor equipment yes. and apparel. You know, it's, that, that's a huge industry around here, and that those prices have gone up nationwide and even higher in the Seattle area, as if it wasn't already expensive to be an outdoors mm-hmm. person mm-hmm. and pretty prohibitive. And you know, it's it's not the kind of thing you really want to go for the cheap brand anyway, because you've mm-hmm. got to no. you've got to expect it to perform for you, and yeah. you want it to last too. Yeah, 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 yep. Food bills too. I went food shopping oh this my week. Gosh. My gosh, I came oh, home and I no. said to my husband, I said, I, I I, brought the receipts back because I actually want to see where the money <laughs> went this week. Yeah, honestly. Every single week I do grocery shopping, it just seems like it's getting higher and higher. And the supplies also, like, I constantly have to replace, find a replacement item. As a Canadian, I usually celebrate Thanksgiving twice because there's Canadian Thanksgiving and American Thanksgiving. And this year, I couldn't find a turkey in October. Oh, wow. <laughs> Is that a first, cat? Yes. Interesting. Yeah, I've only I've only been here since 2017, but still it was it was just like, all right, this is this is real now. You got my second Thanksgiving dinner, which I always look forward to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this hurts. Oh man. <laughs> it's hard to have leftovers when you don't have a turkey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I am trying to eat out less and be more reasonable with food choices. But anyone who knows me knows my relationship with cheeseburgers. Paige, I'm sure you can attest, (laughs) which is why I feel like it's my duty to take a bit of an issue with Business Insider's review this week of Dick's Burgers, Seattle's favorite, affordable, completely fine burger chain. Reviewer Sarah Jackson was not impressed with the food. She said the shake was decent, but the burger and fries were disappointing. Kat, those are fighting words around here. People will defend dicks to the death, but I am curious how you see this, because as I understand it, you have actually never eaten a dick's burger. That is correct. (laughs) Guess where we're going after this. Yeah, exactly. I was like, I was thinking, you know, maybe I should get like a takeout and and eat it while we're on this talk. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But at the same time, you know, like I understand, like it's like this cultural icon of Seattle. It's beloved. And mm-hmm. when I saw the pictures on the review, I thought, well, this is not fair. Yeah. Thank you. She did them kind of dirty. Yeah. It looked like it had been sitting in that bag for too long. That looked like a burger mugshot. It did. Yeah. It looked like a version <laughs> of a burger mugshot. She let it sit in the bag for 30 minutes, which is a total rookie move here. No. And, and I will say I'm not a meat eater, so I'm not even really there to appreciate the burger, but... Come on, you can't come for dicks. It's, I go for the fries and milkshakes. Everyone else with me can get the burgers. And yeah, you get it in your bag. You eat it right there. It's fast. It's this whole experience. It's not a gourmet burger. So I don't know, was the, was the review a little too much? No, I just feel like she disrespected a burger of this type. I mean, <laughs> this is not the way you review a dick's burger. This is not the way you eat a dick's burger. You eat it in the parking lot or on the way to where you're going. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, respect the burger. <laughs> yep, exactly. I have to agree with her about the fries, though. I, I have a high fry standard, and those dick's fries do not make my cut. So <laughs> fry stands come after me. But, okay, okay, but it is all about you got to be eating them right as they they get handed to you. You're eating the fries. They're not going to make it that much longer. But that's yeah, well, when you want it. You know, you, you might be standing there at 1.30 in the morning on, on Broadway, <laughs> shoving your face with Dick's fries, and there's nothing better, okay? Paint me a picture, Paige. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> nothing like Dick's at 1.30. <laughs> 
We are leaving it there. That's all for today. Thanks to our guests, Kat Kruger and Paige Browning. Thanks, Trish. So nice to chat with you. Have a great weekend. That's all for today. Claire McGrain produced today's show. Our production team is Jenny Cecil Moore, Diana O'Pong, Caroline Chamberlain Gomez, and Jason Pagano. Matt Jorgensen does our theme music. I'm Patricia Murphy. Have a good weekend.